Okay, here is a slightly more advanced bone tutorial, and um, I'm going to help you to learn from my mistakes. Uh, I enjoy using Lightwave, but uh, man, I'll have to tell you the rigging tools uh, leave something to be desired, and uh, they sometimes don't work the way I would want them to or the way you would predict. Um, let me show you what I mean. Let's set up an, a leg using IK. Um, we'll add a bone. This bone will be like the, the hip of the character. And we'll add a child bone with, by pressing equal. And we'll move this one. This will be a leg. Move this off to the side. Shift R. Hit equal again. Rotate. And we'll hit equal again. This will be the foot. OK, so what we have here, we have a hip. We have a thigh, we have a calf, and we have a foot. All right. And um, <clears throat> uh, if you saw my last tutorial, you would basically know how to set up an IK chain for this. Let's hit N and create a goal. And we'll move the goal down here and move it off to the side so it's kind of centered with the last bone there. Let's go in. We'll go into we'll rotate. We'll do our pitch correction stuff. As you can see, it's correcting the pitch so that everything lines up nicely. <clears throat> and then we'll start setting up our IK. We have an extra bone. If you saw the last tutorial on how to use IK, <clears throat> there's an extra item here since we have a, a, a pelvis here. We don't want the pelvis to be um, flipping and flopping around with the IK. So we're going to say that the pelvis is unaffected by IK descendants. That will make <clears throat> the, uh, the IK chain stop there. We'll go no further. So these ones will set up the way we set up the last ones. We'll set this up. Set up for IK. Set that up. And then we'll set this, this one up here to point at the goal. And we'll match the goal's orientation. Because the <clears throat> goal object was pointing its own direction, we remember the uh, we're matching the goal's orientation. So <clears throat> what we need to do is um, it's basically the foot has flipped around to match where the goal was pointing. And there's a way to, to uh, get out of this later. I'll show you how to, to match up the goal's orientation with the foot's orientation later. Let's turn on our IK and we'll start moving it. Now you'll see, like again, we're, we're doing a foot here, so let's move this up. We'll say that this black line here is, is the floor. And we want to animate uh, the leg moving around, jumping up and down on the floor like a walk. If we were going to walk this character around, we would have it walk like this. This is exactly what we would want. We would want the legs to, to follow this goal, and we would want the foot rotation to be controlled by the goal object, so we're only animating the one thing. And if we move the hips down, for example, when the character's weight sinks, if we move the hips down, we want the legs to flex and we want the foot and toes to not go through the floor, just like that. Um, so it's working correctly, it seems. The problem is that um, when you start animating and you start getting into more and more wild stuff, if you're <clears throat> moving the hips around and you start animating like kicks or something like that, and you start moving things around, it probably won't do this just because I'm <clears throat> trying to show you how it breaks. It probably won't break, but uh, I'll see if I can get it to, to do what I want there. There we go. All right, you're seeing what's happening now. Um, this happens quite often when the bones get into extreme positions, especially if you've got a lot of keyframes and things are moving around. You'll see the the bone do this flip like this. And it's, again, it's it's a bit harder to see here, but it's not, it basically, it's not operating the way I want it to. Um, it's kind of sort of working the way I want it, but and as you can see here, the bone is is flipping around to try and reach that goal, but it's not. It's kind of not getting there right. And the other thing is, I can't. If I want to rotate the knee independently, I can't do it. I can't rotate any of these because um, this one I can rotate side to side, but it doesn't make any difference. That's not one. I, I can't rotate the knee. As you can see, these things are all locked down because they're all being controlled by IK. So what we need to do is, is create craft a better setup, and it's a little bit complex, 
but uh, I found this leg setup to work the best. So we'll create our null object, um, we'll add our pelvis bone, <clears throat> and I'm going to put this pelvis bone up, facing up so we can differentiate it. <clears throat> we'll add a child bone and move it down, and I'll move it off to the side because usually the, the hip is going to be over on the side here. Rotate that. And using the rest length tool, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squash this thing way down, make it very small. <clears throat> Hit equal, create a child bone, and move this child bone back so that it's directly on top of this one. <clears throat> and I'm going to scale this one out so we can easily select it. What we got here is we've got the, the hip, the hinge. This is going to be the hinge of the hip. Then we have a hip controller. This is going to be able, by spinning this around, by rotating it, we're going to be able to, to animate the knee moving. And uh, also it's going to split the um, uh, rotational axis. I'll get to that in a minute. Create another child. Now this is going to be our thigh bone. So we're going to point that down. Give it a good rest length to represent a thigh bone. We're going to scale this down. This is going to be the knee bone. And it's going to give us um, better deformations and split the rotational axis. The, the key to the good leg setup I found is to have two bones splitting the rotational axis. And I'll get to that in a minute what that means. All right, so this will be our, our ankle. And then we'll have a foot that comes off the ankle. Move it a, a bit off. And we'll create a goal object. And move it down to where it should be down at the uh, bottom of the ankle there. Move it over. <clears throat> okay, and again, I'm kind of religious about this. Go to uh, Shift F6, Parent Mode, and Shift P, Shift P. In fact, this setup won't work at all unless you uh, correct the pitch rotations. It's a hassle, but it has to be done. Okay, now we've got our pitches corrected. Now we'll go in and start setting up the motion for this. Now this one, the top, the pelvis, we don't want it controlling, being controlled by the IK of the, the foot, so we'll say unaffected by IK. We'll go and collect, uh, click on that little hinge bone, and we're going to set the top to the heading and the pitch to be controlled by IK, but not the bank. And then for the, uh, the hip controller, we're going to set the pitch and the bank but not the heading, because it is, as you can see, the heading is the red one. <clears throat> the pitch and the blank are, are, are bank are the, the green and the blue. And we want to be able to rotate this, um, this uh, hip controller uh, side to side so that we can control the orientation of the knee. And this one here, since it's just going to bend, we just want that to be controlled by pitch. And the same for this one. And the same for this one. They only bend directly backwards. And if you want, you can turn on the limits, the the, uh, the limits for this that will keep it from bending forward if you want. But for some reason, for me, sometimes it, that causes problems. Now we'll go here, we'll set up, this is the last uh, bone in the chain, so this is going to be the one that points the goal. Turn on IK, turn on match orientation. And again, it spins to try to, to reach the orientation of the actual object. So we'll just spin it back. I'll show you a trick later on on, on how, to, how to deal with that. All right, so now we have everything set up. Because we use the uh, pitch orientation tool, IK got turned off. So now we'll turn on the IK. And as you can see, if we go and select our goal object, we have nice IK. And I've, I've been finding that this thing is, is pretty, pretty close to impossible to break. I mean, you can spin it around, move it up and down, move the pelvis around and the IK doesn't seem to, to flip, which is something that happens with a lot of them. And the other, other thing you get is that you can, you can point the knee independently. So you can <clears throat> go ahead and, and have him, for example, if he stamps his foot down, you can have the knee wobble or you know, stamp out a cigarette or something like that. So um, I found this uh, to be a pretty good setup so far. This is the basics on how I set up IK 
for a leg or an arm or whatever. And um, it works for me in, in most cases. I'm able to go ahead and use this in a wide variety of circumstances. All right, so that's um, the basic tutorial on, on my uh, how, how to set up a, a decent IK leg setup. It's a bit weird. It, it's a bit kind of unintuitive that you have to split these control axes, but that works out best. If you go in, just remember to have two bones splitting that uh, these control axes in two. And for whatever reason, it just seems to work out much better than just having one bone do it. it uh, it animates really good, and I haven't really had any problems with this setup uh, yet.